Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is October 26th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. We have Alaska, BC, Washington, Oregon, Idaho. Here's the Pacific Ocean. There goes last night's system. Powerful front moved across the area, brought plenty of lightning to the Washington, Oregon coast, even a few strikes inland. And you can see that pushing off to the east as we speak. Here comes the next system on its heels. This is going to blast through the area tomorrow. You see the cold air behind it, some sort of tropical moisture caught up in this system. It is going to be an atmospheric river although a fairly weak one and mostly beneficial as long as it doesn't drop too much rain over any one burn scar area. And then we've got another system on the heels of that. It's going to roll through Sunday, another atmospheric river probably. Cat 1, Cat 2 at best, mostly beneficial for this time of year. And then we're going to turn the pattern to uh, possibly colder here, maybe even a little bit of lowland snow across some of the region here. We'll check that out here shortly. Uh, you can see this upper level low. Look at the lightning it's producing off to the west of the Hawaiian Islands. Here goes our system though. It's got this tap all the way back towards the Western Pacific and Sunday system is out here as well. It's going to be on the heels of this one. And uh, as we go through the day today, we're going to get a little bit of light precipitation out of this possibly across some of the region here. But the real rain starts as we go through Thursday as the atmospheric river starts to move into Western BC and down Vancouver Island. Now taking a look at Seattle yesterday, again, another day below average temperatures here 57 is the average only got the 51 47 hundredths of an inch of rain we're trying to catch up to this total here across the pacific northwest rain gauges are trying to catch up we're going to add to it through the end of october will we get there uh, probably not but we might get close now taking a look here cocoa rods west of the cascades anything with yellow here is over an inch of precipitation the darker blues are between a quarter and an inch and you can see some rain shadowing here across the north side of the Olympic Mountains here up towards the San Juan Islands. But some pretty good amounts through southwest BC as well. Rain shadowed again here on the backside of the Cascades. But the further you get east and the higher terrain, you picked up on precipitation values there. Not too much through the valley there in uh, through Idaho. Generally less than a quarter of an inch. Now they are looking at our atmospheric rivers here. They have not put out... Uh, an issue for excessive rainfall yet because that mostly applies just to burn scar areas right now but they are watching it and they may upgrade that coming up here now taking a look here northern hemisphere there's bc washington oregon let's back that up so we're current you can see our atmospheric river that's going to be bearing down on our region here you can see the route it's got to take it kind of gets this long route around the trough here and it's pretty narrow by the time it gets to us so probably mainly just a category one atmospheric river although it initially had a tap all the way back towards the maritime continent here. Now, as we go a bit into the future, Gulf of Alaska Trough spins the next system into the Pacific Northwest here, and this will be our next atmospheric river coming up here. And this is as we go through Saturday night into Sunday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, taking a look, what is an atmospheric river? This is the cross section. If you're looking from west to east, and this is the vertical scale here in kilometers you can see it gets up to about 10 11 000 feet here so they're not that high when they run into the big terrain of western bc western washington oregon they really get wrung out so rain shadows are a big player in just how much precipitation you get during an atmospheric river but i just wanted to show you guys this cross section pretty interesting looking here these are not that high so that's why on the east side of the washington cascades for example you can get hardly any precipitation out of an atmospheric river while the west side just gets gets absolutely drenched and huge precipitation totals occur. Now, looking at the integrated vapor transport, this is that atmospheric river coming. You can see it's not that dynamic coming across the region. It's going to be mostly beneficial. Sorry, let's back that up again. Coming across Washington down through Oregon here, not that impressive of values. By the time it reaches um, Vancouver Island, it's just over 500 a bit, but you can see that really start to relax as it moves down across the area. So it will be an atmospheric river, but not a very substantial one, mostly beneficial. That's good news. Here comes the next one. It kind of weakens as it reaches us as well. A little bit stronger, maybe a cat two for some areas as we go through on in through Sunday here. Now looking at precipitation totals, let's go through the 24-hour totals. This is the running total here. You can see atmospheric river move across western BC, down through Washington, down towards the Oregon area here. And then the next one on its heels, a little bit better precipitation made for the Washington Cascades. Not too much of an impact there on Oregon before the pattern changes goes to a little bit colder. We'll look at that here in a moment. But now let's look at the European. It's been showing a little bit different here. So 
There goes the atmospheric river, the first one, sagging down south. Here goes the next one. You can see some pretty good precips showing up near that burn scar for the Bolt Creek fire here. Some values over three inches. That might be uh, kind of concerning there. And you can see it brings much better totals all the way down through the Oregon Cascades. Again, kind of spiting California, cutting that precipitation off right at the border there. So let's back up and play that through one more time. You can see both those just flying through there. And then uh, and not much for California coming up here through the extended. Sorry about that, folks, if you're watching from down there. Now, this is what an atmospheric river is. Duration, the longer it lasts, of course, the higher category rating it's going to get. The water vapor transport, and these are the values here. We're going to be above... <clears throat> excuse me, 500 for a brief amount of time here, but not for long. I, I don't know that any one area is going to get 24 hours, but it just might meet that criteria and just barely. So taking a look here, this is 850 millibar temperatures here. What I want to show you here is here's Sunday's system in the atmospheric river moving through. Then watch this cold air start to sag down across the region here as we go through early November. And then off through the extended this air gets even closer, it sags down south over central British Columbia here. British Columbia gets pretty cold, and some of this is going to try to move out across the area, but it is still pretty early in the year. You know, the, these domes of cold air are not as deep as they will be as we get towards December and January. So I, expecting lowland snow might be a reach, but it's not completely out of the question if things line up just right. As you can see, that cold air tries to get close to the area. And you can see the first wave as we go through early November, mainly bottled up here, but it does get out over the Pacific and it'll continue to bring us systems in active weather as we go through early November. Now look in here, European versus GFS battle here. The European is on the left, GFS on the right. There goes last night system. Here goes the atmospheric river, tight gradient across the area. You can see the ridging across the Intermountain West and the troughing here leaves us in between across the Pacific Northwest. And we bring that subtropical moisture into the region here Pretty good model agreement here as we go towards our 108, but the European is stronger with this next system, bigger gradient across Pacific Northwest as it sags down over the area. GFS a little bit further north. Pretty good agreement still at hour 174, right? But here's where the disagreements start. You can see that GFS wants to throw this ridging up towards Pacific Northwest and European says, uh, not so quick. And the European has just been killing the GFS, at least from what I've been noticing over the last couple of weeks. And you can see it remain this trough over the Pacific Northwest. There's still some troughing on the GFS, but the European is stronger. And for the most part, as you go on through the extended here, both models are in agreement that the troughing is going to remain over the West Coast of North America here through early November. So we're likely to remain active here. Now, this is looking at the HER3 cam. I saw something kind of interesting in the 12Z run here. Look at some of these wind speeds up towards the Hood Canal Bridge, up towards Muckle Teo out here in <clears throat> Edmonds. Some pretty gusty winds as you get towards the 50s and 60 mile per hour range. Look at some of the coastal areas up towards Bellingham, 54 maybe would be Island will hit 50 miles per hour here. Upper 40s for the Washington coast, maybe a 50 mile per hour gust as well. So what's causing this wind here? Well, if you look into it a little bit here, you can see this is the inner 50 millibar temperature. So I want to show you something as we get closer. Right there. You notice how that kind of warms up there as we go through Thursday early afternoon. That flows moving over the Olympic Mountains. It's dropping down. Compression heating here brings a little mesoscale low and it can enhance the gradient right across this area. We've had actually some pretty good windstorms in the past due to this feature. Although the European and the NAM are not showing these high winds in this area. I just wanted to kind of show you guys a little bit of an introduction to what the mesoscale low is on the northeast side of the Olympic Mountains here. And then as you look here on the European, not really showing those high winds around the Port Townsend area there and across North Puget Sound north of Seattle. So it's not showing up on the European there, but it is still windy conditions. You can see a 50 mile per hour gust would be island, maybe along the shoreline here up towards Bellingham, straight of Georgia here, especially the higher terrain as well. And then as we go towards the NAM 3KM, let's just fill it all in here. You can see Bellingham 47, uh, mid 40s, maybe a 50 mile per hour gust in the northwest Washington coast. Of course, the higher terrain as well. So a pretty blustery system, but it is mainly north of Seattle and the southeast winds in advance of the atmospheric river coming through the area. Look at Whistler coming up here. We we'll change our gear here to snow a little bit. You can see some pretty good values coming up here in a couple of systems Friday night or actually Thursday night into what Saturday night and Sunday morning here. Here's that cross section here for Whistler. You can see they do go above freezing here for a while at the ski area, uh, the freezing level getting up above the surface here for a while then dropping down back below. 
Now here's Bellingham International Airport. Check out the breezy conditions coming up here. This is for Sunday morning, Sunday during the day, Thursday late morning here shown. This is Vancouver. You can see the mean is up towards 40 miles per hour uh, during the day on Thursday. So heads up for that. Potentially breezy again with that next system rolling on in here through Sunday morning. Whidbey Island, take a look here. You can see the mean winds up towards the upper 40s here. And again, that blustery condition showing up there for Sunday. This is out of Vancouver Island. The mean is up towards 40 miles per hour also for that system on Thursday. Now, taking a look at the higher terrain, I just wanted to kind of show you guys this. This is a little bit south and east of Mount Rainier here. Uh, kind of uh, out by the Natchez out there, but the higher terrain is kind of showing you the winds that they get out here. Then you look off into the future here and a lot of big winds going on here. So anybody who lives in that higher terrain in the Cascades or out in the boonies there, you can attest to just how windy it can be out here the higher you get in the mountains. Now looking at Klamath Falls Regional Airport, showing some of that cold air showing up here in the beginning of November and showing a few little bumps here in the control run for some measurable snowfall. So Fingers crossed snow lovers out there through uh, Klamath Falls. Bellingham, look at this. Some of this cold air even showing up in a little bit of snowfall for Bellingham. Even the control run showed up over three inches. But you can see most of the ensemble mean is very low and a lot of them have, or the ensemble runs have very little snowfall. Just kind of something out there. It's still fantasy land at this point. It's just something we'll watch here as we go through this colder pattern change in through early November. This is Boise out there. You can see some of the ensemble runs starting to show some measurable snowfall starting as we get into early November as well. Now, this is looking at total snow. Yesterday's run in the European. This will go out 10 days, so watch this. Look at some of these snowfall totals building up across the area. Even a little bit of fantasy land snowfall coming across the Puget Sound here into the lowlands. But this is way out there in fantasy land. Don't get too excited yet. Even a dusting there for the coastal range of Oregon. But look at some of these values here for northeast Oregon, the central northern Cascades of Washington, Mount Rainier. Look at that. Even the Oregon Cascades get in on this action as well, as well as the Rockies of Idaho and British Columbia. And we're not going to leave you out over there off to the east either. Look at some of these impressive totals coming through the 10-day period. And did you see what happened there at the end of the run? A little bit of measurable snowfall for the valleys out there in Idaho as well. We'll have to watch that and look at some of these totals out here through Yellowstone and central Idaho up towards the Panhandle, the Rocky Mountains. Nice signal there for some snowfall on the higher terrain. This is snow depth, current snow depth right now. So you can see there's really not that much here. You can see Snow Snoqualmie Pass here. Not too much as we deal with it right now. But then as we go through the extended a little bit here, you can see it actually back off a little bit here as that atmospheric river is moving through on Thursday. It eats away at that snowpack a little bit here. And you can see it depreciate here as we go through on in through Saturday night. Let's actually back up a little bit here. Let's go a little bit further out and we'll watch this snowpack rebuild again here as we go out through next week and we start to get a little bit cooler here. And look at the snowpack really going across the north central Cascades, Mount Rainier, even down towards the Oregon Cascades as well, Olympic Mountains, BC. So good signal there for some snow as we go through early November. And here is for out east. Now let's watch this as we go through how much of the snowpack gets eaten up. Not too bad. And then we start getting into, well, this is actually through this weekend. You saw it depreciate a little bit there. I'm on the 06Z. Let's go ahead and run the 0Z. And let's watch it rebuild here as we go through the extended. You can see it getting eaten away a little bit by Sunday's atmospheric river, some warmer weather. But then it really bounces back as we go through early November there. Look at that. Very nice. So... Now, taking a look at sea surface temperatures, you can see La Nina is in charge. This is not an anomaly map. This is actual sur sea surface temperatures. You can see how much warm water builds up here across the Western Pacific. Now, that's what the Earth is all about. It's about heat transfer. You have this much warm air. It wants to get north to the poles. So this is in makes this jet stream really strong a, a lot of times during La Nina years, especially here off the coast of Asia here across the Western Pacific here. And that changes our Rossby wave train downstream, the ridges and troughs get direct get affected by this jet stream out here and a lot of time it's pretty wavy and variable and we so we can get these variable jet streams which can bring cold air into the pacific northwest during this la nina years fairly easily but you can see la nina is bringing this cold water across pacific ocean here and that be, that's because we have these anomalous winds here that come out of the east and blow this water across brings up upwelling here along the coast of south america 
and moves out across the central Pacific. But at the same time, these winds then take this sun surface heated water and push it up into the Western Pacific there. And that's why this is the main driver across the planet, really, when it comes to La Nina and El Nino years. So you're just building up so much energy and it's got to go somewhere. And it really messes with the jet stream and makes things crazy out here across the Western Pacific, which affects us downstream in the Pacific Northwest. Now, this is looking at sea surface temperature. The anom This is not anomaly. This is the actual we just put it into motion here. Now you can see this cold water that's coming off the coast of South America. La Nina is still in charge right now, folks. And you can see the warm water that builds up across the Western Pacific as a result. Now the water is always warmer here, even in El Nino years, but this drastically changes during El Nino and this will warm up several degrees across the Central Pacific and warm water will bunch up here against South America. And that changes the whole dynamic of the jet stream that approaches the West Coast in North America. We tend to get more of a South westerly flow into California during El Nino years, which brings them more rainfall here. And it kind of keeps us in a warmer southwesterly flow across the Pacific Northwest also. It's not that we can't get snowfall in those years. It's just a lot less likely. So anyway, I thought you guys might enjoy that there. So yeah, here we go. This active weather is going to continue. Probably some light precip out of this little warm front feature as we get closer uh, to the end of the day today. And then we're going to bring this atmospheric river through Thursday and then Saturday night into Sunday, another one. Then we're going to change the pattern here and we're going to remain active with systems moving through the flow and potentially bring down a little bit lower snow levels. If you, as you guys saw here, we're going to eat away a little bit at the snowpack over those couple atmospheric rivers, but then we're going to bounce it back. It looks like as we go through early November here, and then, you know, maybe we can hold on to it. Maybe not. November is notorious for some pretty strong atmospheric rivers. So, uh, that'll be a key in some of the flooding events as we go through November. How much will we build up the snowpack and how strong will these atmospheric rivers be? Will they melt that down? We can get some pretty nasty flooding scenarios with big atmospheric rivers and big snowpacks that tend to melt. But anyway, that's kind of looking a way off into the future there. But uh, first things first, we got to deal with these couple of atmospheric rivers and then the potential pattern change. So anyway, hope you guys are enjoying the weather. Hopefully these fires are getting put out across the region. There's probably still smoldering fires going on across the Cascades. So these atmospheric rivers are really going to put a dent in those fires here, though, by the time this weekend ends. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, click like, subscribe, tell your friends. Uh, thanks for all my new members signing up. You make this page possible. And I will do this again tomorrow, and I'll talk to you guys then.